Welcome to Let's Get Real, the show that tells the truth about love, sex, and relationships. This program is for mature adults only. Watch at your own risk as the truth can have life-changing consequences. This show does not give advice. The information provided is accurate to the best of our knowledge. The opinions stated are those of the person speaking. And the truth, well, the only truth that matters is your own. For more information, visit www.gettingreal.tv. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, here's your hosts, David and Darlene Steele from Relationship Coaching Institute. Welcome to Let's Get Real. Today's episode is about dealing with a sexless marriage. Joseph from Montana writes, I have been married for 20 years and my wife and I haven't made love in over eight years. She says we're not connected. What does that mean? One time we went hiking together and she said she felt slightly more connected to me that day, but not enough for sex. We don't even kiss anymore except a quick peck on occasion. I miss my wife and can't believe our sex life is over. It breaks my heart. Ah, Joseph, it breaks our heart too. That eight years is a long time to go in a sexless marriage. And I can see how, you know, that's difficult. You're a very patient man, maybe a little bit too patient. So we'd like to talk to you about that and also about connection and really uh, what the different kinds of connection are and why it is that that hike didn't really do it for your wife. So first, Joseph, we'd like to share with you our two-year rule. And this is for anybody watching this video, anybody who has a problem and is feeling stuck. If you're stuck in this problem for two years, it's time to get help. It's time to do something different. It's time to stop pretending that it's going to take care of itself or that you can fix it all by yourself. If you are stuck for two years or at least two years, then please do get help. Chances are this is more than you can handle on your own. So. Joseph, your wife is giving you a very clear message that she needs connection in order to feel in the mood for sex with you, and she hasn't felt connected with you for eight years. So it'd be nice to know what happened for her, what changed. Uh, you've been married for 20 years, and, and all of a sudden, 12 years into the marriage, you know, she's not feeling connected anymore. Well, I, I have the feeling it wasn't a, you know, one day it stopped. Right, but something changed for her or something changed in your relationship and it would be really nice to know what that is. That could give you some clues. But assuming that this is correct, that if her connection needs were met, then the sex would happen. So what does she mean by connection? We, we get that you're confused about that. <laughs> A lot of people so, are confused about that. <laughs> so, so you're a woman, darling. Why, why, don't you, why don't you speak to this? <laughs> well, really, Joseph... The, it is kind of confusing because people do get connected after a couple hour hike. You can get connected to somebody you actually just randomly uh, met on that hike. Uh, you know, you're sharing a, a same experience. So at that moment in time, those two people, any two people can feel a connection um, in, a, in a moment. Yes, we're connected right now. <laughs> but that's very much different than that deep, connection that people want um, uh, in a relationship and the what really needs to happen especially for women to you know uh, really feel attracted in a sexual way so what do women need or what does your wife need I mean we know that there are some different types of connection at, at the very least there's emotional physical and spiritual so emotional connection is in my opinion, what you need to feel loved. So your wife might want to feel loved by you and love with you in order to feel connected enough to have sex with you. So another type of connection is physical. Chances are that's not what's working here uh, for your <laughs> wife. But sometimes women do like, you know, more non-sexual touch and affection that is non-sexual in order to feel close to you and they need to feel like, you know, every single time you touch them, it's not that you want something, <laughs> that you have an agenda for sex. And then 
spiritual connection, it's about feeling connected even when you're not physically present. It's about, you know, feeling connected in your life and your life purpose and uh, sort of that you're both on this planet for a reason and that you might even be soulmates or there's a higher purpose or reason for you being here. And you can often feel spiritually connected, for example, when you have a shared mission, like when you have kids together. And you know that these are your kids, this is your family, and you are spiritually connected all the time and the kids connect you and your mission and purpose of having that family to together connects you. Or if you work together, or you just share a lifestyle together, or you enjoy, you know, the same kind of movies together. So there's lots of things that spiritually can connect you. So it'd be nice to know what kind of connection your wife really wants, really needs, is feeling like is missing, so that then you can have a conversation and do something about it. Yeah, I'm going to guess it's all three. Okay. So the other consideration here is that after 20 years and eight years of no sex, there has been a habit established. You have now a pattern of interacting in, in your marriage. And this pattern is a habit. And it's really hard to change habits. There's a certain amount of inertia that goes along with that. So to change that habit requires a momentous amount of, of energy. And it's, it's entrenched. You guys, you guys are stuck. And it is quite possible to change a habit and overcome inertia on your own, but realize that's probably one of the best reasons for getting some outside support, because the intervention from the outside can help both of you, you know, uh, uh, clear the logjam and get over the hump, or whatever metaphor you want to <laughs> use, so that you can start breaking that habit and changing that habit and establish some new habits that will work better for you in your relationship. Right, so we want to offer you some strategies to consider. The first one is just shifting your attitude. So, and this might seem a little bit um, uh, like we're, you know, putting the burden on you, but uh, instead of focusing on what, on not having sex and the fact that you're not having sex, can you turn it around and kind of focus on what you do really love and appreciate about your wife. If you want her to feel loved and connected, it's going to be from you focusing on how much you love her and appreciate her, not what you're not getting in the relationship and how it's not working for you. So oftentimes a relationship can be totally turned around by stop focusing on the problems and what's not working and focus on the love and the appreciation and the connection and what does work for you. And then we highly recommend, and this is true for any relationship, mm -hmm. especially yours, but multiple times a day is express your love and appreciation in small ways. This can be with a shoulder rub. This can be with getting her a cup of coffee, it, rubbing her feet, uh, telling her that you love her, just looking at her lovingly. Uh, you know, there's so many things, just getting the paper for her. <laughs> and there's, there's so many, taking out the garbage without being asked. You know, there's so many ways, multiple times a day, even if you're busy, even if you have, you know, hours apart from working or whatever, there's so many ways, multiple times a day, that you can express your love and appreciation in small ways. And also, we highly recommend what we call the Platinum Rule. So the Platinum Rule says, do unto others as they want to be done to. So this applies here because your wife has needs, and if her needs are met, she's going to feel connected. You're not quite sure what they are, so we need to find out what they are and meet those needs in ways that work for her. So what does she need? And work with her on getting those needs met. And when you make that your mission, and as a guy, you know, I know that, you know, when we have a job to do, we take it seriously. <laughs> okay, so make this your mission to figure out what her needs are, talk to her about them, you know, experiment and try different things, really work at it. And then when your wife feels safe, and she feels that you really love and care about her, that you're working hard to meet her needs, 
then she will feel loved, then she will feel connected, and then you can work on the sex part. So we also recommend that you use the 60-40 rule. And that says that 60% of the time, 60 of the time I'm going to um, uh, work on making you happy. Only 60? <laughs> and 40% of the time I'm going to make sure that my needs are met. And I do the same thing. So 60% of my energy is going to be about making you happy. And 40% of my energy will go into what my needs are and taking care of them and making sure that they're met in this relationship. So when both partners are doing that, when both partners prioritize the other one's happiness just a little bit more, you know, you don't want to ignore your own needs. So that's why we call it the 60-40 rule. So when both partners are prioritizing the other partner's happiness, I can tell you from personal experience, it feels really good and it works really well. So that's something that you can do and you can practice in your relationship and even talk with her about it. And that really only works if, um, if uh, only, only really works well if both par partners are willing to do that because um, you, you definitely don't want to be in a long-term relationship with you giving and giving and giving and not receiving something back. Right. But the 40% uh, that of your energy that you'll put into getting your own needs met can be about talking with your wife about what your needs are and working with her to get them met. But then 60% of your energy will go into meeting her needs. So we highly recommend that you focus on intimacy before sex. So intimacy means closeness and connection and conversation and physical closeness, you know, all the things that you want, all the things that your wife wants. And needs. <laughs> and intimacy includes sex, but it, it is more than sex, much more than sex. And we tend to need intimacy in order to enjoy sex in the long term. So when you think about it, if you have sex without intimacy, yeah, you can get your animalistic needs met, but over time, it won't feel fulfilling. So intimacy really is the key to a fulfilling relationship and a fulfilling sexual relationship. So we highly recommend that you, you know, learn a bit about intimacy and you work on in increasing intimacy with your wife. And we have a great program for that. Uh, we call Radical Intimacy. So we highly recommend you check that out and take a, take a look at it and use those strategies to develop the closeness and be able to tell the truth to each other and create an intimate, close, emotional relationship that will then result in an intimate, close, physical relationship. And so one of the things that you might want to try now is to introduce some phys physical affection, um, but not foreplay. I mean, introduce some physical uh, affection, but not uh, something that's going to feel like you're trying to get her in bed. Uh, because, you know, clearly she's not ready for that. But, um, so what kinds of things could you try? I mean, there's so much. Uh, you could just um, hold her hand. Maybe hold her hand walking down the street. <laughs> um, uh, non-sexual. Put your arm around her. Yeah, put your arm around her. Non-sexual kinds of hugs or neck rubs or anything like that. Something so that your physical contact with her doesn't feel like you're just trying to get her in bed because right now it doesn't sound like that's going to feel good for her. Right. So women love this stuff, but they hate it if they think you're doing it with an agenda to try to have sex with her. <laughs> so there's so many things you could do to introduce physical affection in your relationship and you, you want it to be all the time. You want it to be constant. And if it's just, you know, every once in a blue moon, then that's, you're not going to be very close physically. But when you are close physically and you have your arm around her and you're holding hands and you're, you're physically close, that creates intimacy as well. And you do little physically affectionate things like, you know, straighten her hair, <laughs> you know, pick the lint off her, you know. So as she allows you inside her physical space, then actually that'll help create better connection between you two. And don't forget hugs. You know, everybody needs a hug. 
And the, the more you hug, the, the, the healthier you are, the happier you are, that certainly counts in a marriage. Yeah, but I, I really make sure, though, that she's, um, uh, that this physical kind of affection is welcomed by her. If you are um, trying to hold her hand or give her a neck rub or something like that, and she's, you know, kind of backing off or, or it, it's not feeling good to her, then it's going to actually, I think, do harm and not, right. not and, be helpful. Right, and you use your words and say, is this okay, you know? And, you know, and, and talk about it and let her know why you're doing this. I mean, she might, you know, feel confused or suspicious. So let her know that, you know, you saw a video that recommended that, you know, one way to increase closeness in your relationship. And connection, which is what she wants. Yeah, is to increase physical affection. So, uh, and again, Joseph, please, it's been eight years. You're way past our two-year rule. So get help. Do not try to do this on your own. There's a tremendous amount of inertia in this relationship right now. These patterns are habits now. It's going to be really hard to change on your own. So outside intervention will help you. You know, it's like get a team on your side. Don't do this by yourself. So if you have an idea, a suggestion, or a comment for Joseph, please enter it in the comment box below and let's help him connect once again, <laughs> to his wife. And please do remember that telling the truth has consequences. It's the only way to have a really fulfilling relationship, but not all relationships can handle the truth. So if this is your situation, please do get the support you need from a qualified therapist, counselor, or coach. No one is successful alone, and just a little bit of support can go a long way in helping you live happily ever after. So, thanks for watching, and bye for now. Yes, we're connected right now. You've been watching Let's Get Real, the show that tells the truth about love, sex, and relationships. For more information, more episodes, and to join the free Getting Real Club, visit www.gettingreal.tv. May you live the life you love with the love of your life.